Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will explain submandibular approach. This approach is selected for fractures of mandibular body and angle region and ascending ramus in selected cases when a transolar approach is not suitable. This applies to more difficult fractures patterns such as comminuted atrophic uh, and defect fractures to allow optimal manipulation of the fragments and good control of the lingual cortex and the inferior border and the application of the internal fixation hardware. Some have used this approach for the treatment of subcondylar fractures. The main neural structure is the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve. Uh, the facial artery and vein can also be encountered during this dissection. For the position of marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve, Different studies are available in the literature, for example, Dingman and Graves' classic cl dissection of 100 facial halves. Uh, another study is by Ziara and Atkinson. A uh, patient's landmarks useful during dissection should be exposed throughout the procedure for operations involving mandibular ramus or angle, the corner of the mouth and lower lip should be exposed within the surgical field anteriorly and the ear are at least the ear lobe posteriorly. These landmarks helps the surgeon to mentally visualize the course of facial nerve and to see whether the lip moves if stimulated. The skin is marked before injection of a vasoconstrictor. The incision is 1.5 to 2 centimeter inferior to the inferior border of the mandible in order to protect the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve. The incision is located along a suitable skin crease in a whatever interior posterior position needed for mandibular exposure. Here in this figure, you can see uh, two locations of submandibular incision. Incision A, parallel the inferior border of the mandible, but can cross tension lines. Uh, incision B parallels, but is within the resulting skin tension lines. Uh, incision B uh, makes a less conspicuous scar in most patients, so it has maximum cosmetic benefit. It should be noted that skin creases below the mandible do not parallel the inferior border of the mandible, but runs obliquely posterior superiorly to interior inferiorly. Thus, further interior, the surgeon makes an incision in or parallel to the skin crease. The greater the distance to dissect to reach the inferior border of the uh, mandible. Both incisions can be extended posteriorly uh, to the mastoid region if necessary. Here you can see the exposure offered by the mandibular approach. The use of solution containing vasoconstrictors ensure hemostasis at the surgical site. Two options currently available are the use of local anesthetic or a physiologic solution with vasoconstrictor alone. Use of local anesthetic with, with vasoconstrictor may impair the facial nerves function and also interfere the use of a nerve stimulator during the surgical procedure. Therefore, consideration should be given to using a physiological solution uh, with vasoconstrictor alone or injecting the local anesthetic with vasoconstrictor very superficially. Muscle relaxants used in general anesthesia can also impair nerve function and must be avoided. If using skin creases for the incision, the orientation of scalpel blade is parallel to the relaxed skin tension lines. The length of incision depends on a fracture extension and planned internal fixation technique. This diagram shows a skin incision of about two to three centimeter below the inferior border of the mandible. The incision of the skin and subcutaneous tissue exposes the underlying platysma muscle. Uh, there is another picture showing incision through skin and subcutaneous tissue to the level of platysma muscle. Here you can see the incision parallels the lines of minimal tension in the cervical area. The incision does not parallel the inferior border of the mandible, but courses inferiorly as it acts 
extends interiorly. Uh, the initial dissection, uh, here you can see the uh, skin, then uh, there is a subcutaneous tissue. So the initial dissection is through the platysma muscle to the superficial uh, layer of the deep cervical fascia. This is the superficial layer of the deep cervical fascia. Then through it in the area of the uh, submandibular gland to the uh, periosteum of the mandible. Uh, then the uh, division of the pterygo mesentric sling and periosteum is incised. Uh, here you can see this is the periosteum is incised uh, at the inferior border. But uh, here the cut of the pterygo mesentric uh, uh, um, sling is not shown because the incision level is interior to the mesenter muscle. Uh, here you can see the cut end of the facial artery. This is the mesenter muscle and uh, this is the zygomatic arch and this is the marginal mandibular, marginal mandibular branch of the uh, facial nerve. Uh, there is, uh, uh, you can see in this uh, picture, the sharp dissection through the platysma muscle that has been undermined with a uh, hemostate. Here you can see the hemostate. In order to protect the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve, the platysma is undermined bluntly with scissors prior to dividing it with a scalpel. The platysma muscle is divided sharply, uh, preferably two to three centimeter below the mandibular border, uh, not necessarily at the same level of the uh, skin incision. Uh, here you can see the relationship of the facial artery and vein, uh, the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve and the uh, submandibular pre-mesenteric lymph node to the inferior border of the mandible and mesenter muscle. Superior subplatysmal dissection would expose the underlying mar marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve. This is not usually necessary. In order to avoid exposure of mandibular branch of facial nerve, do a subfacial dissection that is deep to the superficial layer of the deep cervical fascia and in the supra uh, glandular dissection. Uh, here you can see the uh, marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve within the uh, investing layer of the deep cervical fascia. Uh, if the ligation of facial artery and the vein is necessary, the retraction of the uh, vessels superiorly protect the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve, which usually uh, lays superficial to the facial vein. Uh, divide the pterygo mesentric sling and incise the periosteum uh, at the inferior border to expose the ramus. There is another picture incision through the pterygomesetric sling after reduction of vital structures. The incision should be at the inferior border of the mandible because it is the most avascular area in which the mesenter and the medial pterygoid muscles giants. If, inc if incision is interior to mesenter muscle, then you will just incise the periosteum uh, as there will be no pterygomesetric sling and uh, this has been also explained in the previous slide. Uh, this figure shows the amount of exposure obtained with submandibular approach. The channel retractor is placed into the sigmoid notch, elevating the mesenter, parotid, and superficial tissues. Exposure more interiorly is accomplished by retraction in that direction. This is a sigmoid retractor, the curved a flange inserts into the sigmoid notch retracting the mesenter muscle. During wound closure, the pterygo mesentric sling is repaired. Uh, this picture uh, also showing the closure of the pterygo mesentric sling and platysma. The pterygo mesentric sling is closed with a resorbable interrupted suture. The platysma can be closed with a running resorbable suture taking care to avoid damaging to the underlying blood vessels and the seventh nerve. After the closure of pterygomesoteric sling and platysma, skin and subcutaneous sutures are placed with or without running subcuticular suture. Uh, 
Thank you. Have a nice time.